Now partnered with the Howling Commandos, Shuishi would begin his search through the mountains for Claire and the members of Sayaka's group of gatherers. With the message that they had received, it was obvious that they had ran into another group, the group that Sayaka had warned them about. After all, they weren't the only ones that were looking for the coins. But now that they were in direct conflict with this new enemy, there was no telling what to expect. For Shuishi, his mind was on Claire, hoping that she and the others would be safe. He didn't smell anything lingering in death, but that was shortly before they found the bodies. There were five of them, unrecognizable of course. None of them were from Shuishi's group, but he could tell that some of them had been taken out via gunshot. It was Claire, Shuishi thought. She must have been able to handle herself and the gun to have been able to defeat enemies like this. The girl must be a good shot, Dugan would say. Yeah, but I'm worried about the recoil. The gun is abnormally large, so there's no telling how much damage she took. It's obvious that if none of your members are here, then they didn't die. But they were taken hostage, though, Elsa would say. I think we need to find the location of this camp. Then afterwards, Shuishi, you'll have to go in there on your own while we camp it out. Understood. The journey would take them about two days' time. This group had hidden themselves well. Save for a few clues, there was no way of knowing where they would actually be. As the sun was beginning to set, Shuishi could pick up on a scent. There were four of them, none of whom he recognized. As they got closer, a voice would call out in the distance. We know you're there. No point in trying to hide. Shuishi and the Howling Commandos would step into the light of the fire. The four mystery assailants looked as though they had been waiting. So, you must be the boy from that group. The strange wolf-like boy. How did you... It doesn't matter. The master's waiting for you. You're free to visit him. As for the rest of you, you'll have to stay put here. Unless you want your friends to die. Master Madoka is a kind and patient man. But do not mistake his kindness for weakness, my friend. Doing so, you will only suffer a thousandfold. He wants to lead us into a new world. A glorious world. But that can't happen if there aren't rules, decorum, some decency. You're free to meet with them. Only you. Shuishi would look to the others, nodding for them to stand down. As he moved on ahead in the trail, an eerie sense of loneliness would come upon him as he was walking into enemy territory with no backup. Before long, he could see a fire off in the clearing, a large bonfire where a whole group of people were gathered. If he had to estimate, there were at least 50, maybe even 60 people here in total. All of them misshapen, misformed, true monsters. And near the center of the bonfire, Sayaka and the others were all tied up, including Claire. And sitting on a crag, a large rock overlooking the group, a shraggly man with puffy-like hair, his eyes wide and bolden, his teeth as sharp as that of a ravenous shark. Hmm. <sighs> well, it seems like the guest of honor has finally arrived. Welcome, my child. For once you were lost, but now you are found. And you are now home, next to your kin. Claire, 
Shuishi locked eyes on her. She was barely conscious, and she had wounds on her arms and legs. Shuishi was preparing to rush over to her when a few in the group attempted to stand in their way. Shuishi gave them a deathly glare, and Madoka would stop them. It's all right, it's all right. Leave the boy be. But sir, don't worry about it. He may look dangerous, but he's smart. He'll know better than to try to pull a fast one. We have him completely surrounded. His friends are all tied up. The best he could do is save one, maybe two. The rest would just be for the slaughter. He might look dangerous, but trust me, even a savage beast can be calculated when it wants to be. Claire, Claire, are you all right? <clears throat> Shu, what took you so long? I'm sorry, I got held up, but it's all right now. I promise everything's going to be okay. That's right. Everything is going to be okay. You have nothing to fear from me, I promise you. What you're after and what we're after, it's the same thing. Your group of gatherers here were looking for the coins, same as I. And I have reason to suspect that you have them. Think again. Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm coinless. No, no, not that. You have them hidden away somewhere. I know. They were smart to hide them. We searched nook and cranny, but we couldn't find them anywhere. But I know they had to have left a clue for you. The comrade. Just let them go. We don't want any trouble with you. Trouble? No, 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 you misunderstand. I don't want any trouble either. I didn't come all this way to start a fight. I came here because I'm looking for friends. Friends? Yes. This world is going to change. A new order is being established. With these coins, once all 100 are found... The final coin will grant the ultimate wish, the ultimate power. You see, my friends here, they've all come from a long way. A lot of them from broken homes and families, left about with no one to care for them. Truly, a lost soul if there ever was one. What I wish to do is to become the type of man that can grant a wish. Any wish. Anything that you desire. That's what I want to be. So you're after power then? I just want to be able to change the world. Is there anything wrong with that? So you want the power to do what the alien does. And let me guess. You're just going to give away wishes from the kindness of your heart. Of course I am, boy. Why wouldn't I? Who wants to live in a world filled with hate? In a world where you can't be free to be who you are? There's so much violence and hatred. Everyone's always going on and on about peace. But look at the utopia I've created. All of these people, young and old, man and woman... Everyone from a different walk of life. They all came to me. Boy. Because I have the power to make things happen. They put their faith, their trust in me. And you can do the same. All you have to do is join my side. And, among other things, I figure as much. It's never just about the kindness of your heart. What you want to do, you want to control others with your power. You'll never give anyone a wish just because they ask for it. There's always going to be an underlying motive. 
You make it sound like I'm some sort of con man. You are. This is the biggest con. You think any of the people here are with you out of loyalty? This is fear. The only reason why they're with you is because you strong on them to do so. You call it that. I call it aggressive negotiations. In the end of the day, you don't get anywhere in this world without power. That much is certain. Here's the deal. Your group killed five of my own. That's something I can't really tolerate. I lost a lot of good soldiers that way. And I think there has to be some level of Compensation, don't you think? Tell me, how much are their lives to you? Their lives? Yes. Life has to be worth the price, isn't it? I would say one coin per person, but I don't think that's fair. So how about five coins per head? That should be about... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About 35, let's say 40 coins. 40? I know you gotta have a few on you, so you've already gotta start. You're telling me to get coins. Or what? <laughs> or what? I kill them. It's that simple. And no, I'm not doing this for blackmail. I'm doing it on principle. You killed my guys. And now, their deaths have to be compensated. Of course, I could just bring you all into my gang. But I don't think that's enough. But I will make it fair. For every five coins you gather, that's one life you save. I'll even let you pick who you want. If you're able to bring me 40 coins, you can have them all. But if you can't, if you don't have enough, well, you can pick who you can save. I'll take your leftovers, and I'll kill the ones you can't. You really think I'm going to let you go? Or what? <laughs> what exactly are you going to do about it? I know you think you're powerful. You probably are. But look at where you are right now. You're a long way from home. You're entirely surrounded. And even if you have backup, they won't get here in time. I'd just be doing you a favor that way, sparing you from a worse fate. All you gotta do is bring me my coins, join my family, and I promise you, everything will be A-OK. -okay. And one more thing, there's a little bug going around. Word is, you've made some new friends. I don't really like them, but the more the merrier, right? Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna gather my coins. You and your friends. You have about three days time. You're allowed to go all throughout the forest. And you're allowed to look as far as you want. But if you leave, your friends die. If you call anyone, your friends die. If I suspect that you're trying to pull a fast one, they die. You and your little friends will bring me my coins in three days. And when you come back, when you've given me my payment, you will kill your new friends. As an act of loyalty, of course. As you know, blood must be paid with blood. I can't just let you get away with killing my men with no consequences. But this should be easy. 
these new friends of yours, you hardly know them, and you got into a little bit of a scrap. So I think it's more than fair. You hand over your new friends to me as a sacrifice. You give me my coins. And I will welcome you all into my family. And when you become family, we become bonded for life. That means I will take a bullet for you and you will take a bullet for me. You will stand at my side. And when I become the God of this world, you won't have to suffer anymore. All of your wishes, all of your dreams will come true. This is a promise of Madoka. Now, run along. Because when the sun rises again, that is when your time starts. Shuishi would look back to the group, looking to Claire and seeing in her eyes a look of trust, knowing that their lives were in his hands. Shuishi would descend from the group of monsters making his way back to the Howling Commandos as they descended to the lower part of the mountains as he would give them the rundown. So that's the gist of it. I have three days to gather 40 coins. I'm supposed to hand them over to him with all of you. And then afterwards, you're supposed to kill us, the mummy said. This is problematic, Dum Dum Dugan said. This is getting in the way of our mission. We came here looking for Verusa, Dugan would say. We didn't come here to get involved in some wild goose chase for magical coins, let alone to give up our lives. Who says we're giving up anything, Elsa would say. No one's going to die here, except for them. As far as finding these coins, it's not so bad. We've already got seven to start with. I mean, that only leaves like, what, 33 more? Even if we're all looking, to say that we'll be able to find 40 in just three days? Kind of a stretch. And how do we know that they're not just going to kill us all anyhow? Dugan would say. After all, if these scoundrels really are playing with life and death like it's a game of Russian roulette, who's to say that they don't just wipe all of us off the board as soon as we're done? We'll just be running around doing their job for them. And 40 coins. That's almost half of a hundred. I know. This is all so much to deal with. But we have to come up with something. We can't just leave them to die. Elsa would say. You know we can't. Miss Elsa, I understand. But right now, we need to focus on the bigger picture. Your mother, Verusa, is hiding somewhere in this area. Who knows, she may have left by now. If we lose her here, who knows when we'll find her again. I understand that, Elsa would say. But the only reason why we're in this situation is because we attacked this boy wrongly. We slowed him down. He wasn't able to help his friends. And now they're captured. Their lives are in danger and we can't turn our backs on them. Well, we're going to have to think of something. Because I think we're overlooking the little part where we're all supposed to die. For not dying again. None of you are going to die. Shuishi would say. He knows I'm going to tell you all of this. I figure as much. So, if he knows that I'm going to end up telling you everything, then he must have another plan at hand. But how? How could he have known about us? I think I have an idea, Shuishi said. And I think I may know a way for us to turn the tables on him. Just leave it to me. For today, you guys just start looking for the coins. And I'm going to find who's the little spy bird, 
Shuishi said. And with that, the Howling Commandos would begin their search in the mountains, looking for the coins. Shuishi would appear to be doing the same, but he was keeping his eyes focused, looking around for something. It didn't come to him till about six hours later, but as the sun was high above them, he felt it. The glaring light from what it might have been a lens. He could see in the direction, but he made sure not to make direct eye contact. He just went about his business as he waited. Eventually, it would begin to set. The sun, as evening was arriving upon them, the Howling Commandos would regroup with what they had found. They had gathered ten coins in total, upping their f count to seventeen. And Shuishi would arrive as well, with a new gift. It was in the form of Ikuchi, the young man in a green tracksuit, whose head had turned into a camera lens was thrown before the group. Claire had her suspicions about you. I really hope they weren't true. <sighs> it's not my fault. I didn't have a choice. You don't know what type of man Madoka is. If he finds out, you're just... <clears throat> I don't really care about your excuses, Shuichi said. Right now, you're going to tell me everything. Everything about Madoka, his group, what he's really planning. I... I can't. You can't. Well, that's too bad. The sun's getting real low. And I'm getting mighty hungry. What? I can't fully control myself. Especially when the moon is full. I turn into a savage beast, Ikuchi. And I can't really decide what I'm going to do at that point. <laughs> you can't kill me. Master Madoka will know. Then what? Then I'll take my chances. Don't be stupid, Shuichi. You can talk big and bad, but you and I both know you can't actually kill me. You can't. Who said that? You forget. We have coins in our possession. We can ask the alien for anything we want. Maybe even a replica you. If you can't tell me what I want to know, at least a replica will be useful. Don't play games with me. <laughs> Who said I'm playing games? We warned you. We told you what would happen if you got in our way. But you did it. You see, Claire, she's actually the nice one. She likes to toy with her food. She'll actually give you a chance. She'd let you live with your pathetic life. As for me, I'm not that nice. I don't really know who or what I am. And I'll be honest, after the day I've had, I really don't care. But hey, if you don't value living, then how about we just destroy everything? Me and Claire made a pact. If she dies, then I'll die with her. So go ahead and betray us. Get Claire killed. It won't change anything. I will snap your neck. I will rip you apart like the pathetic piece of trash that you are. I will bathe myself in your fucking entrails. And then I will march to Madoka myself. And I'll take out as many of them as possible. But you won't let it get that far, Ikuji. Because deep down you know what you are. You're pathetic. You're weak. You always want to envy the strong, but you don't have the strength to take it. Who the hell are you talking to? Who are you talking to? 
You don't make the demands here, Ikuchi. I would do as he says, Dugan said to Ikuchi. The moon is starting to rise, and we can only hold him back but for so long. If he wants you dead, you're dead, the mummy would say. But at the very least, I can make sure you're wrapped up tight and neatly for your funeral. It'll have to be closed casket, assuming there's anything left. Wolf boy, no fan of you. Don't look at me, Elsa would say. You're the one that pissed off the wolf. So what's it going to be, Ikuchi? You willing to be a rat one more time? <sighs> You're a madman. All of you. You can't beat Madoka. No one can. He's insane. He doesn't think like a normal person. He has a screw loose in his head. You think you're going to get over on him? No, that's just what he wants you to think. Funny. I feel the exact same way, Shuishi would say. Right now, you need to decide. You're caught between a rock and a hard place. Madoka might be a demon, but I'm really the devil himself, if you try me. There's only two ways this ends. Either you help us, and you get to live with your pathetic, miserable life, with your tail tucked between your legs, and I never see you again. Or you can betray us. And I promise you, I will make your death the slowest, most painful, most agonizing, most excruciating death you can ever fathom. And I will make you wish I killed you sooner. <sighs> Fine, I'll tell you what you want to know, but it won't change anything. You're all dead. We'll see about that. This concludes Gleepnir Legion of Monsters. What if Shuichi was the werewolf? Season 1, Part 6. As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is PowerCore Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned tomorrow evening as we continue with Gleepinir Legion of Monsters. What if Shuichi was the werewolf? Season 1, Part 7. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with PowerCore Productions and Podcastings. Signing off. And I'll see you next time.